Morning boys and girls, this is Tim with Little Crow Gunworks. And what in the world are we doing today? Well, we're in uh, beautiful, sunny central Minnesota. It's uh, March 15th, 2023, and it's an abnormally snowy year. It's kind of nice today though, it's about 40 degrees. Um, but we got a ton of snow on the ground, and we're at the range. We're shooting 100 yards. What are we doing? We are testing a concept rifle. Uh, it's the end goal is for it to be a, a long-range training rifle slash prairie dog slash coyote rifle um, and this is just a, a proof of concept test platform this is not what the gun's gonna look like when it's done it's just for us to to get some good testing data and uh, what are we doing well we are testing the 22 Nosler why why the 22 Nosler it's kind of an obscure cartridge uh, it was originally designed for a gas gun, and because of that, they had to stick stick to the lame 2 and 260 overall length. But we're putting it in a bolt gun, so we have 2 and 550 to work with. What does that mean? Well, we're going to test this factory ammo and see what we can wring out of it. And then when we have the brass, we can hang the bullet out where it should be and really get the horsepower out of this thing that um, I think the original concept was intended. So if you're not familiar with this case, it's very similar to the 223. It's, um, I think it holds two or three grains more water and therefore more powder, um, but it's a rebated rim. So it has the 378 bolt face, same as the 223, um, but it's rebated. So the body is actually bigger than the rim diameter. Um, and that's how they get the extra capacity while still maintaining the 2 and 260 overall length. So Nosler has data on this thing, uh, their factory ammo velocity data, and it was an 85 grain RDF, which is what this is. It's the best bullet they load for it for aerodynamics and long range. Um, at 2750, well that's in an 18 inch test barrel. And that's fine, that's not bad for a gas gun, but when you take that kind of horsepower and you put it in what I like to call a real barrel, this is a 31 inch, uh, inch and a quarter straight test barrel. We're gonna shoot some, crop this barrel shorter and shorter. I think we're gonna eventually end up at 22 just so it's handy because it's a full inch and a quarter straight profile. We call it a, a truck axle. Um, I think the barrel was 10 pounds before we did anything to it. Just the barrel. Not the gun. The gun is 19 flat, the way you see it. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in a long barrel and see what we can get out of it. And my initial um, guess is it's going to be somewhere in the 2950 neighborhood initially um, when we start shooting it. But once the barrel breaks in and uh, kind of gets seasoned, you get some fire cracking in there, and there's a little more resistance on the bullet. That's going to increase the pressure some, and I think it's going to land somewhere in the low 3,000s, 30, 20, 30, 50, somewhere in there. Why is that relevant? Why are we doing this? Well, we want guys, we want to be able to offer something to our customers um, so that they can practice at long range without um, the expense associated with some larger cartridges, and then also have a dynamite um, prairie dog rifle and coyote rifle. So... This thing, the way it sits, this 85 grain RDF, it's a great bullet. So the G7, I speak in G7. For those of you that speak in G1, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't speak that language. But G7, I think this bullet's somewhere around 254, which is fantastic. Um, as an example, a 308 bullet, uh, like a 175 Match King, is like 210, something like that. So it's more aerodynamic than that. Uh, those of you that are familiar with the 6.5 Creedmoor, the 140 class bullets are in the low threes, like 310. So this doesn't quite match up to that in a gas gun. So at 55 to 65 points lower on the G7 compared to a Creedmoor, you think, okay, well this can't hang with a Creedmoor. That may be true in a gas gun, but a Creedmoor is shooting a 140 at, say, 2,700 feet a second, something like that. Well, when you get this 85 grain RDF going 3,000 plus, now it is comparable. You run that in your ballistic solver 
and you'll find that out to say 600 yards, which is, that's considered long range by most people's standards um, that they're ever going to shoot in their life. That's pretty far uh, for most people. At 600 yards, the wind drift of this going 3 plus and a 6.5 Creedmoor with a 140 class going 2700, the wind drift at 600 is the same to the inch. So elevation is different, yes, because this is coming out faster and the Creedmoor is slower, so this is going to have less drop. But anybody that shoots long range knows that if you've even shot long range one time, you can easily correct for elevation with the elevation turret. It's the wind that gets you. You you quickly find out that you miss targets because of wind, not because you're shooting over or under the target. You're missing left and right. So if you can get out and practice with something that has the same wind drift as some bigger, higher performance cartridges, and the reason we're doing this is, you know, when this bullet's going 3,000 plus, it matches about 80% of big game hunting cartridges as far as wind drift. And that's everything from a, a 6 mil Creedmoor all the way up to a, a 6.5, 300 Weatherby. That, that drifts a little bit less, but like even the 300 Weatherby, 300 Wind Mag, stuff like that with uh, 180 class bullets or even a 300 PRC with the 190 CX, this little thing will have the same amount of drift as those cartridges within a couple inches out to 600 yards. So you can train and practice with this, or shoot prairie dogs or coyotes or whatever, and not have to burn up your big game ammo, your barrel life on your big expensive hunting rifle or whatever you have, and you're not getting punished with the recoil and the muzzle blast and all the stuff associated with it. You can go out and practice at long range, learn how to read wind, and start to learn what you know a 10 mile an hour wind looks like and a 5 mile an hour wind and how much that drifts and how much that pushes the bullet and get all your practicing done with this and it's going to fly as far as the wind's concerned and hit probability it's going to fly the same as your big game hunting rifle so why the 22 Nossler? that's why um, we wanted something that guys could buy factory ammo and replicate the wind drift of their big game hunting cartridges the only other cartridge that offers that capability is the 224 Valkyrie, and we decided not to do that because of the odd uh, bolt face size, where this uses a standard 378 bolt face. So if you burn up a, a training barrel and you decide you want to do something else or a normal 223, you're going to get into hand loading or whatever, and you can load these uh, low drag bullets, you still have the right bolt face. And the 223, we couldn't do because there's no factory ammo offerings that have this kind of performance. The factory ammo and 223 cartridges are based on nine twist barrels. So the best you can do is like a 75 grain Hornady hollow point boat tail match or the um, Norma has a 77 or like the Sierra Match King 77. Those are good bullets, but they, they are, um, they pale in comparison to this 85 RDF. This is an extremely low drag bullet. Uh, the 75 grain Hornady ELDM and the 80 grain ELDM are in that same class as this. Uh, the 88 I wouldn't shoot. It's not as good as the 80 and the 75 uh, from a form factor standpoint. It's not as well designed. Plus you need like a radical 6.5 twist to shoot it. Where this, you can shoot it in a 7 twist and you don't have to worry about uh, jacket failure, bullet failure, stuff like that. So um, this is what we're promoting for factory ammo, and then if you're going to hand load, we'd say do the 75 or 80 grain ELDM. Um, they are right with this for BC. I think this is 254. I think the 75 grain is like 238 or something like that, but it's going to be going faster because it's 10 grains lighter. And then the 80 grain ELDM is even higher than this, so it's I think it's 258, so it's four points higher and five grains lighter. So. Um, that's what I shoot in my rifle that's similar to this. I shoot the 80 grain ELDM right at 3 grand with a 30 inch barrel. And it's just dynamite. Um, you can shoot targets over a thousand yards. You can shoot prairie dogs that far. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what you can do with these little cartridges when you put a good bullet in it. So. Okay, so we fired the first few rounds here with the 22 Nosler. Uh, just to get it on paper, I always bring a, a huge um, target backer. When I sight rifles in, I go right to 100 yards and I use essentially a pallet square where it's like 40 by 48 
so I can just start at 100 and get them on there. But um, anyway, so we got the first few rounds through it, and the velocity was a little lower than I expected. Um, I think I said 29.50 or something like that. And that would be that may be the case if it if we were using a different powder. So the only thing I can speculate is that uh, in order to get their advertised 2750 feet a second in an 18 inch barrel, um, from my experience, they probably had to use a pretty fast burning powder to make sure that they achieved peak pressure and, and burned all the powder in an 18 inch barrel. So when you do that, um, you're not really optimizing for velocity in a longer barrel. And also at the two and 260, they had to stuff this bullet way in the case. So the bullet probably goes down to about where the tip of my glove is, well below the shoulder. So you don't really have a whole lot of capacity left and um, so that would also necessitate using a fast burning powder. But anyway, so the average so far, I think we captured six shots. We were not able to catch the first shot. Um, that happens sometimes with the lab radar. You can get it, um, get it sighted and get it reading bullets with one rifle and then as soon as you switch rifles and different bullets sometimes you have to reorient uh, the radar to catch the bullets um, so sometimes you'll miss the first few but uh, anyway I think we caught starting with the third one we, we caught six rounds so far and it's sighted in at 100 yards and now I switched it to a paper target rather than my pallet square um, but here is what I found to be incredibly interesting. So anybody that owns a chronograph and plays with factory ammo, you will find that velocity consistency is almost never this good. So we had a 2875 average, 2885 was the, the peak, and the lowest was 2869. Extreme spread of 16 for six rounds and an SD of 6.3. That is really good. We're just about to start shooting groups. We're gonna run through a box here, do four groups of five, and see what we get, uh, continue to see what we get for velocity, but then also for initial groups. So we have, I think we have nine rounds down the tube um, just to get some fouling in it and get it sighted in, get some initial velocity. But now we're gonna do four groups of five. We'll show you the end results of that as far as uh, velocity numbers, standard deviation, extreme spread, group sizes, all that good stuff. Because we're going to continue to test this rifle. We'll do this at 100, and then I want to shoot some groups at a, uh, some private land that we have. I can set up uh, targets out to almost 1,100 yards, but I think I'm going to shoot paper at either four or 600 yards. I haven't decided yet. But we'll shoot groups at that distance, that moderate range distance, where we, we don't have to take, in, take wind into account too much. Um, so we can get a good measure on how much vertical the ammo, this factory ammo, will hold at that distance. You know, the wind's going to push it left and right, but we're more so concerned with our vertical dispersion. So, like, if it's if we're at 600 yards and it only has an inch or two of vertical, this is extremely good long-range ammo for uh, practice, prairie dogs, coyotes, whatever. Um, so that's what we're hoping to see. We'll see what happens, but for now we're just shooting at 100. Uh, I'm going to get these groups fired, and then we'll check back in later and show you the results. Okay, so checking back in here with the 22 Nosler. Uh, we got the first four groups of five shots fired, and um, I guess we'll start with the, the grand aggregate for velocity information for today. Uh, so for the whole day we tracked 26 shots, standard deviation was 13.3, extreme spread was 53. So that's a lot more um, realistic for what we expect to see from factory ammunition typically. Now that doesn't mean you can't necessarily shoot long range with it, it's just the farther you shoot usually um, the taller your groups are going to be. Now that's not always the case, there's a couple different dynamics going on there that doesn't always mean that's true, but that's why we're also going to test this at uh, either four or 600 yards. I haven't decided yet. Um, so we can see, and I'll also take velocity data there as well, so we can see 
if we have high extreme spread or high standard deviation or whatever, does that necessarily translate to taller groups at distance? And um, I can say in my experience, if you're shooting, you know, even 800 and in, uh, it doesn't. The extreme spread I have found doesn't um, doesn't matter as much as you would think. Now, if you're shooting ELR or something like that, where you're shooting a couple miles, then yeah, it really matters. ES is kind of everything. But um, at moderate ranges that are they're still long range by most people's standards, but at moderate ranges, it's not as important as you think. So anyway, um, so here's our first four groups. Again, these are this is after six or nine rounds down the barrel. I think it was nine. Um, but I just did uh, left to right, top to bottom. So our first group, uh, it looks like it's probably about three quarters of an inch, just, just maybe just over. Um, we have four shots in the center there, and then um, the fifth one out to the right. So uh, public service announcement, disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, um, I don't have much of a filter, so I just kind of say what I think, and if you're easily offended, uh, you're probably not going to like my videos very much. But um, So in an instance like this, what, what you'll see on the good old internet is guys like to say, oh yeah, she was piling them up, and then I pulled that last shot. Well, no, that's just how the gun shoots. Um, you know, maybe it doesn't like that load, or maybe there's something about that load that it doesn't like, where it doesn't put them all in there, but I don't have any... Uh, excuses um, I'm using a night force 8 to 32 by 56 bench rest so at 100 yards I can see flies on the paper moving around and almost shoot the wings off them so um, there's no excuses you know if you like to to say you pulled that shot that's fine if you want to have that excuse but I personally don't believe in that I mean you know if you did it but what guys like to say is you know when they get one out like this they're like oh I pulled that shot well no, just guns group randomly. Um, that's what this is. It's just a randomization of where the shots land and what you're trying to find is a randomization where they're all pretty close together. So uh, this first group was, what did I say, just over three quarter probably. Uh, and it's got about three quarters of vertical too. So not bad, still sub MOA. Um, the second one, I think this was the worst one. I don't. I didn't measure these, but ju I'm just eyeballing. I'll measure them when I get home. Um, that's just over an inch or right at an inch. Um, so still right around that MOA. You get two together and then uh, three random. So you have just under an inch of vertical and about an inch of horizontal. Again, MOA. This one uh, looks like it's right at an inch as well. It's from the center of this square to the center of that square. These are one inch squares. And then we only have about a half inch of vertical on this. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, and then the last one, uh, I didn't look at this one very carefully before I turned the camera on. So this is, looks like just under an inch um, of vertical. So horizontal, it's about three quarter vertical. It's just under an inch. So we're on, we're on about the center of the line here to just above the center line there. So that's probably seven eighths or something like that. So um, not bad. I mean, not, not spectacular, but it's factory ammo and you saw the velocity data. Uh, so it's it's not bad. Again, the another, another thing you'll see on the internet is guys like to say, "Well, if you want to shoot long range, you want to shoot 500 yards. They all got to be in the same hole." Well, no, they don't. I can tell you from experience, they don't. Um, 500 yards really isn't that far. So uh, ammo like this is perfectly adequate for shooting targets out to that distance or big game or whatever. Uh, not that I am condoning shooting big game with a 22 Nosler, but. If you're a rifle group like this, you and you have the proper training and practice, um, this will hit a big game animal at 500 yards. No problem. It's going to come down to if, whether or not you can read wind. Um, so, and then for the velocity data, you saw the grand, uh, the grand aggregate, but uh, forget my chicken scratch. I'm trying to do this with gloves on, and um, pens don't work very well in the cold. So, the first group, our average was 2860. SD is 7.86, ES a 21. Uh, group 2, average 2857, SD 7 and a quarter. Um, anyway, I don't need to go through them all, but you can see what's going on here. Well, it looks like I didn't write down the last average. I'll get that on there, but 
anyway, um, you can see that when you take a small sample size, like five shots, I know a lot of guys like to do three shots, and then um, brag about their their velocity numbers, like 7.86 and 21, or 7.28 and 20. That's good. I mean, for five shots on the By God Internet, that's uh, that's good. If it was three shots, it'd, it'd probably be even better. But um, as you could see from our, our lab radar numbers, when you take the sample size out to 26 shots, now your extreme spread is whatever it was, 53. And I think the standard deviation was almost 17. So when you get a bigger sample size, then the truth really comes out. So don't... Uh, don't get lost on what you hear on the internet where if guys are bragging about velocity numbers and whatever and you know even group sizes I think the first three here I think this was the first three and that's like a quarter inch or just under a half inch but the more shots you add the more it's going to open up that's just how dispersions work so uh, don't get too discouraged about what you read on the internet because some of it's half true um, but we just wanted to show you the preliminary data here. Like we said, we're going to keep testing this rifle. We're just trying to prove out the concept, and we'll see how it behaves when we take this kind of quality velocity or this kind of quality ammo out to distance and see if that velocity spread and this, these 100-yard group sizes really matter at, uh, at long, longer ranges and show you that. And we're not really trying to prove anything, just kind of get try to get information out there, good information. Like, um, as an example, Johnny's Reloading Bench, he's a, a YouTuber. Um, he doesn't have any, ex like, professional experience doing this, but he likes to test stuff. So he'll test over and over and over and over and over. And guys love his channel because he just tells it like it is. He tries different things, isn't afraid to experiment, and shows you the real data. And that's really all we're trying to do is um, take you along for the ride during our testing because I'm going to do the testing anyway, so... I might as well turn the camera on and, and show you guys what's going on. So you can, uh, you know, if you learn something from it, great. But um, if any, if anything, hopefully it teaches you something and it's a, and it's a little entertaining. But, um, yeah, so I think next, if I can get out to the private land that we shoot at uh, and get a table set up because of the snow, I'm, I'll have to shoot off a table. If I can get some st some rounds on paper at either four or 600 yards, I'll do that. And that'll likely be the next video. So this is just going to be the first video. Um, we'll probably create a playlist for the 22 Nosler and just kind of take you guys along for the ride. Um, so next we'll shoot at long range with this barrel length. And then I think we might start playing with low development a little bit just to see what kind of performance we can wring out of this 31 inch barrel. And then we'll probably um, crop the barrel to 28 next where I think we're going to go in three inch increments. So 31, 28, 25, and 22. Um, so then we'll probably crop to 28 and then do this again. Come back, shoot groups, see if cutting the barrel down and changing the harmonics um, affects the group sizes at all with the same factory ammo. We have 200 rounds of uh, factory ammo, all the same lot. So that way we can test and, and that variable is as consistent as we can make it. So we'll do this again at 28 inches test at 100, go out and test at 600 or 4 or whatever I decide, and then go down to 25 and 22 and keep repeating that, and then also share the data for uh, the hand loads as well, so we can see with the proper powders for this length of barrel uh, what we can really wring out of this cartridge, and, and load it out to 2 and 550, as I mentioned previously, or 2 and 500, not be... Uh, um, limited by that 2 and 260. So that really brings down the performance when you're stuffing a huge bullet way into the powder column. Uh, it takes up valuable space. So anyway, that's what we have for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If uh, you're new to our YouTube channel, it's, it's been dormant for quite a while, but we're trying to get it back in action and, and bring you guys some uh, good information and give you feedback on stuff. Um, so if you're not uh, already subscribed, please do so. Like this video, share it with your friends, whatever, whoever you think uh, would find it interesting. And um, like I said, next time I think we'll be out at our, uh, our private range where we shoot. Um, so we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.